Uh, my name is John Wheeler. Uh, I live in Northeast Texas. Um, I had a start problem with the police uh, about three weeks ago. I woke one morning, heard a helicopter. Uh, unusual for helicopters to fly over here, so I went outside to see what it was. Um, I looked back behind my house to see a helicopter hovering over the treetops. Um, I came outside, had my binoculars, tried to look to see uh, who was in it or if they were having a problem. I didn't know if they were trying to land or, or were crashing or what was going on. And um, I heard something behind me. I turned around and looked. The next thing I know, there was several people coming at me. They had uh, camouflage on. Uh, they had um, assault rifles. Uh, they were screaming profanities at me, uh, telling me to get on the ground, get on the ground. I lay down on the ground. Uh, very seconds after that, there was a foot to the side of my head, grinding my face in the ground. Uh, there was a foot on my shoulder, uh, turn, dislocating the shoulder. Um, uh, grabbing my shoulder and trying to put it in handcuffs. Uh, there was probably about maybe a dozen people on top of me. Uh, they injured my back, cracked, fractured a rib. Um, they finally put the handcuffs on me. I, I remember passing out one time for short, briefly from the pain, and um, they told me stop resisting, stop resisting. Uh, you know, after I was already in handcuffs, uh, they took me and put me in a, a patrol unit. It was very hot out. I was sweating profusely um, from the injury, being in pain. My ears were ringing. Um, moments later, they took me to jail. Uh, they didn't tell me what they were arresting me for. They didn't didn't book me in on anything. They just put me in a cell. Uh, didn't know anything until the next morning. Uh, rest of the day was kind of foggy. Asked for medical attention numerous times. They um, uh, would just would just kind of ignore me. Uh, finally, about 10 o'clock that night, I was told that uh, if I answered some questions for them, uh, that um, they would see that I got some medical attention. Uh, so about an hour after that, I was taken to the emergency room where I was x-rayed uh, and then brought back and put in the cell about 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the next morning when I bailed out, uh, when the, uh, they took me out for arraignment, uh, I was arraigned on misdemeanor charges and uh, felony charge and then I was booked in after I was arraigned. They, uh, Never did tell me what I, what they were looking for. Never did tell me what I was being arrested for. Uh, when I received my personal property that next day, there was a search warrant and an inventory list in my personal property uh, that was contained where they had searched my house. They tore my house up, uh, just ransacked it, looking for everything. Um, they didn't. They said they were looking for marijuana, uh, but they brought no dog. There was no dog involved um, to help search for, in that search. Um, my wife was here. Uh, they were uh, forcing, trying to force her to let them in, uh, uh, and trying to intimidate her with me gone. Uh, my mom, who is um, 90 something, 91 years old, uh, has memory problems. Uh, they were trying to intimidate her, get her to give them, give them the key or let them in. Um, they eventually went in without presenting either one of them with a search warrant, um, and. About it. They uh, claim they found a small amount of marijuana in my living room. Um, don't know where that. Don't know. Wasn't mine. Um, they uh, um, claim I was resisting arrest, which you know, hard to do when you've got a dozen people on top of you and a dislocated shoulder. Uh, it's difficult to resist arrest. Um, that's really all I kind of remember from that day. It was, it was very foggy that day. I mean, when my memory is very foggy uh, after the from the pain from my shoulder being torn out. Uh, it's very difficult, you know, just to kind of keep keep my eyes open without passing out. Um, I went into cell when, I, when they put me in the cell that day. I realized, being through the trauma that I've been through as a as a emergency first response instructor, I realized I was going into shock, and so I had to treat myself for shock in the cell, uh, asking for medical attention, you know, often, but still denied, you know, until I got to the hospital. Um, so everything everything during that day is kind of really, you know, I don't remember a whole lot. That was pretty much about all that was said to me or was done to me until the next day. Well, this now stands with, uh, you know, I'm facing criminal charges. I've lost money for bail. Um, I had to, you know, bail out of jail. Uh, you know, and I'm going to have to pay a lawyer for uh, a bunch of money to try to fight these criminal charges that they're uh, trying to bring against me. Um, and they have no, no grounds for, um, with, you know, I have permanent injury on my shoulder, which is now going to require surgery for a rotator cuff. Um, you know, so struggling and trying to figure out, you know, how I'm going to do now that I'm disabled and have no money. It's going to be kind of difficult to you know, try to start a job or anything like that uh, and do any work. I found out later on uh, that day that who it was. Uh, the helicopter that was flying over the treetops 
uh, was a National Guard helicopter, and it had, um, I'm not sure who was in it, but it was a member of the Delta, of the Delta County Police Department. Um, the people in camouflage and some plain clothes, they were a DPS, and I think uh, one, one, of, one or two of them were uh, DEA. Uh, I don't know any of their names. I think uh, one of them's name is, um, one of the DPS guys' name is Brian Perry, I believe, and the other's name is Greg uh, Wilson. When I got out um, in an attempt to try to find out what went on, um, I have security cameras up because I have a business here at my house. Uh, I have security cameras up uh, for, for the reason, you know, I have you know, money and other things here. Uh, and the, when I got home, the, uh, one of my security cameras had been completely taken down. Uh, the other one had had the wire cut on it. Uh, when you're checking out my DVR to see what was on the recording of it, uh, they, the, the hard drive on it uh, will not, you can't re, I can't recover any of the video or audio uh, that was on it prior to the cameras being disabled. Uh, and according to the machine, it says the hard drive's been damaged. Living in the country, coming from a rural area, very small small town, small police force, they, um, I've noticed over the years they've been getting more and more aggressive as to their tactics. Um, it's kind of brought me as to being a local activist. Um, I've tried to educate people on, on how to deal with police encounters, how to um, um, deal with charges brought upon them. Um, and it, it seems to be more and more Seems to be more of it in these small towns in these rural areas. Seems they get away with it more with their fear and intimidation tactics, uh, uh, especially because the people out here sometimes are maybe a little less educated or uh, um, uh, they don't have the friends support or the people support around them when you're out in the country, you know, and there's no neighbors around you or anything like that to witness any events by the police or any, any you know, crimes that they commit. Uh, you're on your own, and so it's kind of your word against theirs. And it, and it makes it really difficult to stand up by yourself, you know, because once you get arrested out here, you're guilty. Uh, you know, you must have done something wrong or you wouldn't have gotten arrested, is the way they look at it. Uh, they don't look at, well, the, you know, they need more funding for next year at the police department or whatever as to the reason of your arrest. Uh, they don't look at it as like, well, you know, the, the, the chief of police needs a new, new truck or, or, you know, his wife needs a new pair of shoes or a wig or whatever. They don't look at it like that. They look at it, well, you did something wrong, so you got arrested. And it's very difficult to ever you know, battle your way through it in the country. And we need to, we need to, seeing this happen to people around me, seeing this happen to my friends, uh, it made me want to be more of an activist, more take part, you know, try to teach people, try to educate them into, into sticking together, thinking about more about, you know, what we can do to take this over. Because if we keep letting it go on, it's like bringing up a kid. Uh, you know, that, that child is going to try what he can to get away with, and the more you let him get away with, the more he's going to try to get away with. And they're the same way. You have to treat them like children. The more they get away with, the more, that, more, they, more you let them get away with, the more they're going to get away with, the more they're going to try, and they're going to see how well we can get, we go a little further, a little further, a little further. The next thing they know, they're going to have us all in prisons. Hey, what's up, y'all? Pete here. I'm in Cooper, Texas. It's northeast of Dallas in front of the Delta County Sheriff's Office. Uh, I showed up at 8 a.m. hoping to talk to the chief or somebody else like that, or sorry, the sheriff or somebody else uh, to figure out some policies, see if they even follow their own rules. I was told uh, to wait a moment. The sheriff should be in shortly. Uh, I waited until 9 a.m. Then I was told that uh, he was going to be over a court, which is across the street, and that they had a full docket today, uh, so I'm, he might not be accessible until after lunch. So I, uh, I hung out a little bit. Uh, did some other work and I inquired about a Freedom of Information Act request over here. I was told that they didn't have a form but that maybe across the street they had one that I could submit there. I asked across the street. I was told they don't have any forms. Usually people just fill out pieces of paper, you know, soliciting information they want, which is, from my experience, generally how it's been done at different police departments and law enforcement agencies. So uh, I filled out a, a piece of paper. And this is, uh, and I went over back over to the uh, sheriff's office, and uh, the sheriff happened to be in. I waited a little bit longer. I was able to see him. I recorded on video uh, me going in there, and I just told him, "Hey, I'm filming for transparency purposes." And I started asking some questions, and he pretty much said, oh, "I'm not talking to you." Hey, how you doing? Glad well, how are you? Good. Just want to let you know I'm gonna record for Joel my transparency. Joel T. Pete Air. Good to meet you. Just for transparency purposes, for uh, just so there's what a. What do you mean? Uh, well, I I'm, came through town. I was uh, an incident was brought to light, and I just wanted to talk to you, I guess, more about policy, about departmental policy, about it. And um, 
I also intend to submit just a FOIA request to try to obtain some records and things like that related to the incident itself. But more, I just wanted to talk to you about, um, if you had a moment, talk to you about uh, policy, departmental policies, and see if they mesh then with this incident that was brought to my attention. I don't have time for that. All right. Well, you, you, you may leave. I don't have time to discuss our departmental policies about it. He, he encouraged me to fill out a FOIA request then, so I went back out and uh, submitted this one and uh, got a copy of it made and it's stamped, so now it's in their possession. I'm told for Texas legalese they have 10 days to respond to that. So, And uh, here's the stamp received. So we'll see where this goes. What I will say for my time here in Cooper is it is good to know that there are some folks starting to stand up against the abuse that they're, they're uh, enduring by some of these folks with badges who, uh, you know, it's kind of like a classic good old boys network, it seems. So hopefully uh, with this content going out, it'll sort of plant a flag so some other people in the area will get in touch and start working together and people will stop, uh, you know, being scared and they'll just start speaking up for their rights and supporting each other.